Hello and welcome to my bedroom. Let's talk about my bike. And yes, I do get 38 miles per burrito. Thank you to one of my viewers named Jay who sent me this as a gift. So obviously I'm riding the Priority 600X, a bike that I created in conjunction with Priority Bicycles. It's got the pinion gearbox, the Gates belt drive, the Wren suspension fork, and it's just plain awesome. But this video isn't about the bike. If you wanna learn about the bike, I have all sorts of videos about the bike. This is about more of my gear setup. Okay, let's start at the back of the bike. It looks pretty different than my typical setup. For starters, I have a rear rack. This does not come with the 600X. This is a new addition. Usually, I have a seat pack that is mounted to my seat post and sticks up like this and holds all of my lightweight camping items. But the reason why I pushed everything back a little farther is so that I can use a dropper post. And this dropper post is the PNW Coast. And it actually has some suspension in it. I'll show you. Check it out. It has about 40 millimeters of travel, which isn't a ton, but it really takes the edge off when you're going over some of the bigger bumps. And if you have a bad back, it's really nice because it's just a little bit more cushy. Like I said, this is a dropper post. You engage it by hitting a little lever on your handlebars and it drops all the way down. Now for most bike packing, you would never ever need a dropper post. This is strictly for mountain biking over steep technical terrain when you want to get way behind your seat so that you don't flip over. I use this a lot when I go mountain biking here in Boulder. I will also use it when I ride the Colorado Trail later this summer. And I forgot to mention, you can buy this dropper post on the Priority website. Okay, back to the rack. So since there's no seat pack, you have to make room for that stuff somewhere else. And I bought a 20 liter Sea to Summit waterproof dry bag to put all that stuff in. It's about the same amount of room that a seat pack would be. Everything is right there. It does move the weight back a little bit further on the bike, but I didn't notice any problems with my handling or anything like that. I also got one of these dry bag protectors. This one's made by Rockgeist. And they're very handy because a lot of dry bags, when they're sitting on a rack and it's bouncing around for eight hours a day for weeks on end, they can create holes in the dry bags. But this thing here protects it 100%. And it also has these nice little stretchy things right here. I was putting my shoes under here. You could put flip-flops under here, a rain jacket, anything that you wanna grab quickly while you're on the go. And as you can see, this is a very minimalist rear rack. There's not a whole lot to it but my favorite part is that you can mount cargo cages to the side right here. And so I love putting on my wide foot made in the USA cargo cages right here. They fit all sorts of different sizes of bottles. For the Great Divide, I used my big old 64 ounce cans, one on each side, because why? Well, there's not a whole lot of water in New Mexico, but for other trips, you don't need bottles that big. Now, what I don't love about the rack is that it was $130, and in two weeks on the Great Divide, it already started bending backwards. And I really didn't have much weight up here, just that bag with my camping material, so maybe six or seven pounds, and I don't think it should have been bending already. You can see that it's leaning back a little bit. This is made by Tumbleweed. I think they're a pretty cool bike company. This is the first thing I've ever bought from them, but for 130 bucks, I think it should be a little tougher. I will continue to use it until I break it. <laughs> Let's talk about this now. My very first bolt-on frame bag. And when we designed the 600X, we made sure to put lots of mounting points on the inside of the triangle so that anybody who bought this bike could also have a rad bolt-on frame bag. This one is made by my friends at Green Guru. And Green Guru is really cool because all of their products are upcycled. That means that they use products that are probably gonna go to the dump. So old tent material, old bicycle tubes. This is old sail material from a, a sailboat, right? And so they saved it from the landfill and they made a frame bag. And this is really cool. Now, unfortunately, this is not something they're gonna make and produce and sell, at least right now. They made this for me just as a prototype. It really is amazing how much could fit in a frame bag. This is where all of my food 
and my heavy stuff goes right here, you really want your weight to be centered on the bicycle. I also had them make it very wide. A lot of frame bags are kind of right in line with the top tube, but you can see this one is three inches wide. And I do that so I can fit more stuff in it. And it's close, you know, when I'm pedaling, I'm, my legs are close to hitting it, but not quite. So it is perfect. If you like the idea of having an upcycled bag for your bike, Green Guru has tons of stuff. They don't do custom, but they do have lots of pre-made bike bags that are very, very eco-friendly. Right here is the Revelate Designs Jerry Can. There's really nothing to it. It works fine. And this is where I put all of my tools. All right, let's move to the cockpit. And as you can see, it is very crowded, but there's a lot of stuff that's happening here. I got a new stem bag this year made by my friends at Kai Venture Bags. They even made a custom patch. And this is where I put my little Sony camera and some batteries, anything that I want quick, easy access to while I'm riding my bike. These bags are also made by Kai Venture. Also, if you want them to make your very own patch, they will do that for you. They do all sorts of custom colors and fun stuff. They are a great couple. I love them. They're so cool. Also have a bag over here. And this bag up here is where I put all of my bars. I can fit about 10 bars in this little bag. And I always, always have a water bottle right here for easy access. This right here is the GoPro Hero 9. And I keep it right on my handlebars for easy access. I don't film for my handlebars. I just keep it up here with this little clamp thing so I can grab it easily while I'm riding. When you see those shots of me getting, you know, angles from down here and backwards, I just hold it for about 10 seconds there, 10 seconds there, 10 seconds straight ahead, and then I just clamp it right back on the handlebars and I keep cruising. And at the very front of the bike, I have my Ortlieb waterproof accessory pack and it's small but it fits my Mavic mini drone and three batteries perfectly and under this under curtain number one is my big Agnes fly creek bike packing tent I love this tent because it is so easy to pack it has those really short sticks so it fits easily on any handlebar and this year something I have new is a harness for the tent it's made by Oveja Negra a nice Colorado brand this is also made in the USA and you can see that it holds the tent perfectly right there because last year I would just take the straps from the tent bag and somehow fish them through all these brake cables and stuff and attach them onto my handlebar. It was always a pain in the butt early in the morning when my fingers were cold and so this year with this harness it makes life so much easier. And lastly on my handlebar is the Wahoo Roam bike computer it's so handy it really i never get lost anymore because it always tells me exactly where to go you just download your gpx files for any route you want and it just left right left right left right tells you where to go i get lots of questions about my pedals and my shoes so let's talk about it i would say that 95 percent of the time i have a shimano clipless pedal on my bike ever since i started mountain biking in the mid 90s i've been a clipless guy this is a fairly cheap version but i've had them for years and they work great. Now, why do I like clipless? Well, it's just a little bit more efficient. You not only have the push down power when you're pedaling, but also the pull back up. So it's a circular motion and you can really crank. Now, sometimes I use platform pedals like this. And why do I do that? Well, I do it in more technical areas where I'm on and off the bike constantly. So like Baja Divide or the upcoming Colorado Trail. And for that, I will use flat pedals like this that do not have a cleat. This is a new shoe made by Crank Brothers, and it has this really cool locking mechanism made by Boa, a Colorado company, because who likes tying shoes, right? And my go-to clipless shoe right here is the Adidas Kestrel, also with the Boa locking mechanism. All right, let's talk about my tires. What do you think? These are 2.6 inches wide. I am a big fan of wide tires. And why is that? Well, they're just a little bit more stable and they're great in soft sand, which I encountered a lot in New Mexico. Also, I wanna show you something since we're back here. We created the 600X to be able to handle a 2.8 inch tire. So you can see there's still quite a bit of clearance in the rear triangle here. And if you look closely, you'll see some wear right here. 
And if you watched my series in New Mexico, you know that I went through some serious mud. It was completely caked back here and it wore down a little bit of the rear triangle. And I'm very thankful that I had this extra room because it would have been very difficult to get through that situation if this was narrow. It would have clogged up. Just evil, sticky mud. These are not the tires I had for the New Mexico portion of the divide. These are the escapes made by Goodyear. They're a little bit more aggressive tread than what the 600X comes with, which are the WTB Rangers. People always ask me, how much does your bike weigh when it's all loaded down with food and water? And the answer is, I don't know. I've never found a scale that can deal with the bike. All I know is that it's very hard to lift off the ground when it's fully loaded. Now I wanna talk quickly about the Ren suspension fork, and it is so nice. On the New Mexico portion of the divide, it was very rough, by far rougher than anything north of New Mexico, and I was very thankful that I had suspension. This fork has 110 millimeters of travel, which is right about perfect, and it also has a very solid lockout where you just hit this little switch, and it is solid as a rock because not everything is technical. There are some sections where you actually ride asphalt, and it's nice to go from cushy to hard as a rock like a solid fork. This is it, my 2021 bike packing setup. I feel like I have things pretty dialed in and I'm very happy with how everything works together. Things will change from adventure to adventure depending on the circumstances, but this is pretty much it. And I have to say that I love this bike. It's everything that I wanted it to be when we dreamt it up over a year ago with the guys over at Priority Bicycles. And if you really wanna nerd out about some of the details of this bike, I will link below some other videos I made that really go over every single component on this bicycle. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna watch other adventure videos, I have hundreds of them all over my YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more coming down the road.